Hello. In this module, we'll discuss integrated circuit assembly design processes and some of the key materials used. Here's an image of an iPhone 5 or some of the components inside. A complex system like this has all kinds of functions and different components for carrying those functions out. In a system like this, there are sensors, there's processing, memory, accelerometers, gyroscope, wireless and Bluetooth communication, and many of the times they're divided up in the tasks by the different chips and modules inside. So we'll take a look at some basic chips and the assemblies they're in and that'll help us understand what's going on in more complex systems like our iPhones and other handheld devices. Some objectives of this module are that by the end of the lessons you'll be able to identify the key subcomponents in an IC assembly package Describe the basic functions of the subcomponents of an IC assembly. Identify the materials of construction of an IC package. And select appropriate material types for the various IC components. As a review of the various levels of packaging, the IC assembly process occurs after singulating the chips from the wafer. We call this the first packaging level. This is traditionally because this is where the chip or the die is mounted into its protective package. Functions of the IC assembly can be divided into two basic areas, connect and protect. Connection refers to the electrically connecting of the die to the system, while protection refers to the measures taken to ensure the system will function properly after manufacturing and throughout the life of this product. So we're breaking this down to the electrical interconnections inside, specifically these wire bonds here, and how this will allow us to connect it to the circuit board through these package leads here. Let's look at the electrical connections inside. The die contains many tiny output and input pads around its periphery that must be interconnected. Wire bonds are the fine wires used to carry the signal and power from the chip to the larger package pins on the leads. Or leads. The leads emanate from the package body and are attached to the PCB by soldering as we've seen previously. There are other methods than, than wire bonding, but about 90% of the ICs today use wire bonds. These are the wire bonds here that we're talking about, and we'll see a little bit more about them later. Another major function of the IC package is to provide mechanical and thermal attachment and protection. Specifically, the die is attached to the lead frame with thermally conductive materials, allowing heat that's generated during use to be conducted away. Second, epoxy mold compound is used to encapsulate the IC. Epoxy is strong, lightweight, it's electrically insulating, and resists moisture, dust, and other chemicals used in fabrication later. The third component showed here is the lead frame pad, which is usually a part of the lead frame structure, but it is isolated electrically. Because it's made of thermally and electrically conductive metal, usually copper, it acts as a heat sink to thermally protect the silicon die from overheating in use. The materials selected for all the subcomponents in an IC assembly are really important to get the job done and for high performance, especially in the kinds of products that we demand high performance from today. So let's discuss some of the materials used in a typical IC assembly like this one. Wire bonds are made of either aluminum, gold, or sometimes copper, and that's because they're highly conductive and easily formed. The lead frame material must be highly thermally conductive, so copper is most often the choice here. The die attached material is generally a silver filled epoxy compound. The added silver provides thermal conductivity to an otherwise insulating material. Solder is also used for the die attachment. Both epoxy and solder can be dispensed with automation equipment prior to inserting the die. Some of the excess epoxy material has been squeezed out along the left edge of the die, and you can see that here along here. The leads of this style of package are made of copper for its high electrical conductivity and relative low cost. So the peripheral leads are all made of copper. The vast majority of semiconductor chips are made from silicon. As we've discussed before, it's uh, highly available and it's very low cost. Finally, the material supporting the entire package is, includes uh, a 
epoxy material. Epoxy is often referred to as an organic or plastic substrate material. It can be layered and it can be also used as a circuit board material as we've seen. It's so widely used because it has good mechanical properties, it's electrically insulating, and it's very low cost and easy to process. So that's an introduction to IC assembly or level 1 microelectronics integration. The various subcomponents in a typical package and the materials that are used and a little bit about why we use those materials. To see if we can apply what we've learned so far, here's a preview of what we'll be discussing in class. In your teams, we'll identify the subcomponents and materials in this package. Do you recognize this package type? We talked about this previously. Can you count how many dies there are in this package? What do we call this overall kind of a package where we have hmm, maybe more than one die inside of the cavity. We'll talk about this in class more. Finally, here are some examples of wire bonding in modern packages. The image on the left shows multiple stacked chips in a single package. Multiple stacked chips. How many, how many chips are there? Uh, they're all wire bonded together and then out to the package and in between them in a pretty complicated way. How many distinct dies do you think you can count in here? The image on the right shows multiple packages in an array being wire, wire bonded in a mass production operation. So they can put a lot of different packages together and have them done basically robotically for efficiency and to keep the costs down. In watching these two videos I've included, one is in real time. You'll see just how fast the wire bonding occurs. These are a couple of short videos I want you to watch. And then this video shows a slow motion of the wire bonding process. It's pretty interesting when you look at the two. I wonder how many wire bonds can be done in a given amount of time, say in one second. Try to guess how many there might be, or look it up. We'll talk about that in class. Thank you.